Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 12th, and today we're going to be taking a look at this big ridge and glorious sunshine all along the west coast, well up into British Columbia. You see the storm track shunted well up into southeast Alaska and the south coast of Alaska. Taking a look out here, you can see a little bit of stratus off the coastline here. It's not going to really affect much, and we should have another warm day today, as well as uh, tomorrow, Sunday, should be another nice day, Super Bowl Sunday, and then we're going to have a pattern change as we go uh, get this system out here. It's going to ride over the top of this ridge and bring this upper level low. It's going to bring a sharp temperature change, and we'll look into that and what kind of weather that's going to bring for the Pacific Northwest here. So take a look around the rest of the country. You can see it's pretty quiet generally. Uh, looks like some wind chill advisories up there for the north states. And, of course, the heat advisory for Southern California. It's going to go on for a couple more days down there. And now just diving right on into it here. Here is what's going on currently. You can see this high pressure is taking up both residents over the Intermountain West here. And you'll notice this subtle troughing feature out here. It's a thermal trough here in February. And this goes all the way up the Oregon coast towards Washington. And if we put this into motion here, you can see this is this afternoon and this uh, the feature starts to go away a little bit as we get into this evening tonight we still have the high pressure out here but it's starting to shift off to the east more and as this next system comes in you can see the thermal trough is completely gone here by tomorrow afternoon but it is going to allow for another warm day for the interior actually even out to the coastline it's going to still be warm on sunday as this next system approaches here you can see it's not a, a very robust system, but it is going to be enough to bring some cold air aloft. You can see the storm system moving across the Rockies here. And it's really dropped the pressure across the Intermountain West compared to now versus what it's going to be on Monday afternoon. You can see the big change coming there. And looking here, let's start from the beginning here. You can see this warm air all the way up the California coast, all the way up towards Washington here, Astoria. And as we put that into motion here, you can see those offshore winds still going on here. The warm air is still in place on into tonight. Then it starts to dissipate as we get into Sunday afternoon and evening. You can see that cold air approach from the northwest and really cool down the west coast nicely as we go into next week. This is at 700 millibars here. You can see that's even showing up this uh, warm air all the way up. This is at 10,000 feet all the way up the west coast. Thermal trough. And then you can see this really cold air just come barreling down on us here. This is going to bring some thunderstorm potential for the region here too, especially uh, portions of western Oregon, western Washington. This cold air really targets the area quite nicely. And looking here, we have, this is helicity values. And so with this cold air aloft, I, I watch for potential for water spouts on the coastline. And so if we look at this, you need generally about 150 on this value here the zero to three kilometer helicity value it's how much turning is going on in the lower levels of the atmosphere and as we put this into motion for monday you can see there's some helicity associated with the frontal system moves through monday morning and there's a little bit behind it for the oregon coast here into monday afternoon which is really going to be if there was a water spout it would probably occur along the oregon coast here on monday afternoon but still the, that low pressure is not strong enough. There's not a lot of turning there at the lower levels. So it doesn't look like that's going to be too much of a threat there. But if you're out on the Oregon coast, you know, watch the thunderstorms or those showers that are going to be moving through there. They could be kind of interesting looking on Monday afternoon. Same thing for the Washington coast and through the Puget Sound, even through the Willamette Valley. There's a thunderstorm chance going on into Monday afternoon. So let's take a look at the 5,000 millibar winds here. You can see these offshore winds still going, this kind of nebulous thermal trough up the coastline here. And then you can see these winds start to switch on into Sunday afternoon in advance of the next frontal system come here as this, these winds turn northwesterly and then westerly off the Washington coast. This is going to usher in some pretty cold air directly into portions of western Oregon. So there is a chance for a lightning strike or two. So... We'll look at that a little bit more tomorrow as well and try to pinpoint some of the areas, but we're going to continue to look at that here right now, in fact. So this is the upper level winds. You can see kind of this ridging aloft that we got going on this afternoon here, this anticyclone. This is the 18,000 feet, 500 millibars. And then you can see this pattern change coming as that next system, this trough, just kind of opens up over the area here. And you can see the strong winds moving on shore here Monday morning. 
And as we go into some instability that that cold air, those strong winds aloft are going to bring us here. This is for Saturday afternoon. And we're going to go look into Sunday. The system's not here yet. It starts moving in. You can see the Cape values start to increase there along the Washington coast Monday morning. And you can see some pretty good values moving through the Willamette Valley, Puget Sound, Washington, Oregon coastline here into the afternoon. So there is going to be a thunderstorm threat. Even for portions of eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, there is going to be a thunderstorm threat as well as some of this convective available potential energy moves over the area. It just means that there's some cold air relative to the ground. There's going to be some instability going on. And we'll take a look at that in a little more detail here in a second. So here's the system itself. You can see nice glorious sunshine Saturday, Sunday. Then the next system comes down on Monday and starts spreading precipitation over the area. You can see at this point, the Cascades and Oregon getting a pretty good shot of snowfall Monday morning. Some convergent zone activity setting up through the Puget Sound. Some snow in the higher elevations of the coastal ranges all the way up through Vancouver Island, down through Oregon there. And as the system slides down, you can see this convergence zone signature across the central Puget Sound. So we're going to watch that for a lightning strike or two on Monday afternoon. So this is what it's about, folks. This is some exciting weather coming up on Monday. You know, if you're in the Seattle area, watch out for this convergence zone moving down south of the day. And I'm off that day. I might go out and chase it or time lapse it. We'll see how that goes. But you can see these showers moving on shore. Some of them are going to be fairly strong as they move on shore for, or relatively so for the Pacific Northwest, as they move on shore for the Oregon coast. And some pretty good snowfalls going on to the Cascades of Oregon, the Rockies of Idaho, Bitterroot Mountains, and up towards the British Columbia. Some snowfall is going to be falling there too. So here we're looking to look at the convergence on signatures. We're going on into Monday morning now. You can see those southerlies really blasting through the Puget Sound. It's going to clear out our air pretty good as we go back to big time onshore flow. And you can see that onshore flow all the way down to the Oregon coast. And now you start to see the westerlies go down through Strait of Juan de Fuca. And that's meeting up with the winds coming around the south portions of the Olympic Mountains to the Chehalis Gap. And those are meeting in the convergence zone there, which, by the way, I'm working on a video for that. But... I was going to release it a little bit earlier, but since we have this event coming up here, I'm probably going to time lapse it and use this as an example in my video too, this one coming up here. So looking into Monday afternoon, you can see the classic Puget Sound conversion zone across the central sound there. And these strong winds aloft are going to be bringing that cold air down into the Oregon coast. And that kind of hangs out here and it slowly creeps down the sound. So I'm kind of interested to see what kind of weather this is going to bring. Maybe some small hail, maybe some lightning and heavy rain possible in there a brief brief heavy rain now this is a sounding this is looking at astoria here you can see this red line is a temperature profile and you can see the surface is down here just above a thousand millibars or the pressure is higher than a thousand millibars if you go higher in the uh, atmosphere 900 800 millibars 700 600 so this is 18,000 feet here and here is, would be about 5,000 feet 850 millibars and 700 is about 10,000 feet so you can see the really warm air aloft over the region right now and it's it got it cooled off pretty good overnight there but it watches we put this into motion here and you'll notice that surface temperature warm up into the 50s today there for Astoria so you should be up towards 55 degrees or so and you can see this is the cross section here for uh, 10 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees. So this would be 68 and this would be 50 and this would be freezing here. So you can see you got to go way up above 10,000 feet for the freezing level out there on Astoria um, this afternoon and evening. And then you can see they start to cool back down overnight tonight, back down into the 40s on the coastline there. And then you see uh, for Sunday afternoon you warm back up again into the 50s so another nice day sunday on the coast there for oregon as the clouds start to increase there in the as the next system approaches you can see that warm air really holds on there all the way into sunday afternoon especially aloft about 5,000 feet it's pretty warm almost 50 degrees fahrenheit and then we cool back down a bit on into monday morning back down to the 40s the air is still relatively warm aloft it watches the system starts to move in here look how fast that air aloft starts to cool down and you're now below freezing at 850 millibars there and you can see the rest of the profile start to cool off here as we go on into monday afternoon and now we're pretty chilly all the way up to 18,000 feet so you can see if any <clears throat> kind of thunderstorms get going out there they're going to be fairly tall for this region above 18,000 feet potentially so as we go up at 
bit more into this about noon on Monday, a bit more into the future here. And now you can see we've got a profile for some CAPE here. This is what a lifted par parcel of the atmosphere would do. So it'd be pretty free to lift through the atmosphere. And that shows up in the CAPE value here. You can see 300. And there's not a lot of turning with the wind though. You can see it's mostly west northwest and then it turns a little bit. And that kind of shows up in the surface relative helicity values here. Not that impressive. You need a little bit more to get any kind of substantial turning at the surface. But then you'll notice we go into about two o'clock on Monday and that surface relative helicity picks up a little more more. You're westerly here and you're turning out to the northwest above it, but it's still not generally high enough to really qualify for a water spout threat, but never say never. There's a so there's a very outside chance of that occurring. And you can see those Cape values pretty good here. So that's why there's thunderstorm potential on the Oregon coast. You can see these tops probably going up to around 20,000 feet in any of the organized segments of these showers moving on shore. So let's check out what the European is saying for thunderstorm potential across the Pacific Northwest here as we go into Sunday afternoon. Here comes Monday, and this is just lightning flash density potential here. And you'll notice here as you go into Sunday or Monday late morning, you can see some activity showing up here for the Olympic peninsula and then you can see that start to pick up just about noon there for portions of eastern washington and then one o'clock you can see maybe portland and some of the puget sound included in that too so there is some lightning potential according to the european as the system moves through and what we're going to look at more of that tomorrow too as the system gets close to these models are going to get you know everything's going to get more accurate the closer we get to the event so we'll look at that closer also but let's look at the European here coming up into the extended. So you can see the system moving down this upper level low that's going to give us our thunderstorm potential and some active weather, mountain snows on into Monday morning there. And it slides through the ridge, stays pretty strong right off our coastline there. And then the European shows another weak system on Friday right over the top of that ridge. And then it weakens the ridge pretty quickly and starts some troughing over the area. And we're going to compare the GFS to the European coming up here soon there's some differences in the extended here but you can see how we're getting some more zonal flow and this ridge flattening out a bit into the extended so hopefully that's going to allow us to build some snowpack here in later in february as another big storm system moves down all the way into southwest portions of the u.s here according to the european so and this is the this is the control run so let's run this one out this goes out to 360 hours and again, this is going to show the system moving down on Monday. The ridge is still nearby. And then there goes the system over the top of us on Friday. And then we open up another system coming back over the following weekend that comes down all the way down over the southwest USA. And then another system again. So later into February, and then another system again. So if the European is right in the extended, we could be getting some good mountain snow pack rebuilding here later on into February. So... Cross your fingers for that. Now let's take a look at the GFS here versus the European. This is last night's 0Z run. And of course, there's always going to be good agreement between the models early on. And you can see a pretty good agreement with the system moving over the top of us. The GFS out low, but a little bit further offshore. But generally, pretty good agreement there. And then you can see that system open up over the southwest USA as the ridge doesn't move according to both models. Then they both have that next system coming over the top of the ridge here. The GFS is a little bit stronger with that system, as you can see there. It digs that trough out a little bit more as it passes by us. Probably just light precipitation amounts. And then you notice how the European here shows this troughing occurring earlier, and the GFS is more offshore with it. So that's when the differences start here later in the run, and we'll go out to 240 here. And you can see some of the differences The European cuts off the slow over Southwest USA, but the GFS does show the troughing as well. So it's, there is some agreement, but the European has the flatter ridge and the GFS is kind of showing that ridge staying a little stronger and those systems come over the top of that ridge. So there is hope for the extended. There is some, you know, some good things to look at here in the GFS and the European and the extended, but Anyway, we'll take a little bit closer look at this as we get into it tomorrow. I may live stream the convergent zone on Monday as well, depending on how strong it's looking and what kind of vantage I can get on it. Hopefully it'll be a nice 
photogenic event as it comes down the Puget Sound. Some of the convergent zone activity moving down can even have shelf clouds with it. So it can be pretty interesting looking. So I'll, I'll live stream it if it looks pretty good. And if we're getting some active thunderstorm potential, I'll try to get that as well. And we'll talk about this tomorrow and Monday right before the event occurs. So some active weather coming up here for Monday. So something to get excited about. It's going to bring some mountain snowfall that we much need. And as you can see, there's some potential for systems to continue to move into the northwest here on into the future and really help us build that snowpack back. The, this ridging in the sun over the mountains the last few weeks has really done a number on the snowpack, really compressed it and caused some melting. So hopefully we can build that back up. But hope you guys are liking these videos and I will talk to you tomorrow.